Hey everybody, in this episode I'm going to show you how to add a simple enemy to this game. So at the moment we have a player and we have this coin we can collect. Uh, let me show you guys real quick. So if we play the game, you'll see that our player can jump and we have a coin which we can collect. So if we jump into the coin, it um, gives off this nice particle animation. So let's go ahead and add an enemy. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the assets down here and we're going to go to the folder called enemies. I already have it open over here, but you can also search in the search field for enemies and it should plop up. Then we're going to go to the PNG folder and we're going to take the large enemy. So the 512 by 512 pixel enemy. And I'm going to drag and drop it right into my scene view. Now, if you haven't been following this series from the very beginning, then uh, I want to remind you that the assets which I'm using, so the images that I'm using, are going to be linked in the description down below. So if you want to use the same assets, then feel free to do so. In addition, the playlist is also going to be linked down in the description below. Okay, so let's move on. The next thing we need to do is we need to add some components to our enemy. The first component we're going to add is going to be a rigid body 2D. Then we're also going to need a box collider 2D. And then we are going to add a script. And we're going to call it enemy movement. Enemy movement, new script, create an add. And this script is going to be remarkably simple. It is going to be one line of code. Uh, so let's get rid of this stuff. And in the update function, I am going to paste this one line of code. And what this line of code does is pretty simple. It transforms the position of our enemy and it does so along a curve. So over here, we have a curve called my curve, which we need to create a reference to. So uh, it's going to be two lines of code that we're adding over here, in fact. So public animation curve. And we're going to call the curve my curve. All right, so we've created uh, this reference to a curve and we are going to be moving the enemy along this curve with this line of code. So make sure to save the script and we can then go ahead and close down uh, or minimize this window. And what you'll see is that in the script that we've just added to the enemy, there's going to be this field called my curve. Now you can go ahead and click on it. And what you'll notice is that this um, blank window opens up and in the bottom, you have different types of curves which you can add. Now, there are different ones which you can choose from. I have gone ahead and made one um, earlier, uh, but in order to make one, it's pretty simple. I mean, you can just choose a preset and then drag it around the way you want to. If you want to add a new uh, point you want to transform, you can do that too. But I've gone ahead and made one earlier, which is this one. Uh, in order to zoom out, you can simply use the scroll wheel. This curve is a little bit bigger, but yeah, here we go. That's it. And um, yeah, I've added it to this uh, component over here. And if I press play now, you'll see that the enemy moves up and down the entire time. Now, one thing that I still don't like is that the enemy is still too, um, too low. So let's make him be a little bit higher on our screen. So I'm just going to drag up these edges over here. And I'm going to drag the bottom up so he doesn't hit the ground. And yeah, I think that looks just about right. Yeah, let's leave it like that. Perfect. So now we have our enemy moving up and down the entire time. And now you'll see there's one thing that I did over here, which is I changed the curve whilst I was in play mode. Now, when you do that, you need to make sure to add the curve again because once you stop the game, it will reset to the curve we had previously. And you have to choose the one that you adjusted. It's an annoying thing in Unity 
where they don't let you edit uh, whilst the game is playing. So just make sure that you have that in the back of your mind. But I've got it saved now and it's working, uh, should work fine. The next thing we want to do is we need to um, do one thing, which is we need to fix the position of our enemy. Uh, so over here in the component called constraints, you can freeze the position of X, Y, and Z. Now let's see what happens if we don't do that. So if we play the game at the moment, you'll see that if I jump over to the coin and we hit the enemy, then the enemy sort of, uh, yeah, goes floating off. That's not what we want. So let's make sure to freeze the entire position at X, Y, and Z, and then press save. And now what you'll see is that if I try to knock the enemy away, then, uh, well, he stays robust and he doesn't move an inch from the way he is. So that's exactly what we want. But there's one last thing that I want to do now, which is after we've added the enemy, we want to detect the collision between the enemy and the player. In order to do that, we're going to go ahead and click on the enemy and we're going to make a tag and we're going to call this tag enemy. Save the tag, go back onto our enemy and then assign the enemy tag to the, oh, hold on. Yeah, make sure to, 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 to actually um, click on the enemy and then you can assign the tag enemy to the enemy. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and click on our player. And on our player, we're going to create a new component, which is going to be a new script. And we're going to call it collision with enemy. So after this new script we've created opens up, I'm going to add a very simple code snippet to this, which detects the collision between the enemy and the player. So this method is triggered whenever the collider, which is on our player model, hits another collider, which is a trigger. So when that happens, this function is called and the if block within this function is executed. And this if function checks if the object with which our player collides has the tag enemy. And if that is the case, then we want to output in our console the string player hit. Then we're going to close down the script and make sure that is trigger is checked. All right, now if I press play, you'll see that if I jump onto the middle block and get hit, the console over here tells me that the player has been hit, which is exactly what uh, the script does, which we added a moment ago. And now we can jump to the other side. But yeah, that's how you add an enemy to the game. Let's try this one more time. So observe closely what happens in the console. If I jump into the middle and get hit, it says player hit. So the collision is detected and we can jump around and that's how you add an enemy. All right. Hope you enjoy this episode and see you in the next one.